Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Jacqueline Jax and I have a really amazing watercolor group that I am serving here as well as um, a watercolor monthly subscription that I think you would really enjoy if you are a watercolor collector of pigments or you just want to find out more about watercolor. Maybe you're just getting started and you don't want to invest a lot, but we send you paint and uh, paper and all kinds of things to try. So go give it a try. It's at jackswatercolor.com. So Van Gogh, let's talk about Van Gogh because we haven't really talked a lot about Van Gogh paints. And that's because I consider them to be more of a student grade paint. However, with that being said, I recently um, did some digging on some Van Gogh paints that I was interested in pricing out to possibly deliver some really cool dot cards to you guys in the watercolor subscription. So when I was looking at this, it came, I think it came on email from a local art store and they had these dusk colors that I was really interested in. Um, dusk green, dusk yellow, dusk pink, dusk violet. And the reason why I was particularly drawn to it is because they use a pigment uh, that is one of the pigments is quite rare, which is the dusk yellow. It uses a pigment that is only manufactured by two people, and this is PY-128. And um, most commonly found in, I think it's, I believe it's the Schmincke Volcano Yellow. Is that it? No, that's PY-159. Close, though. PY-128. I haven't really seen this color in anything. It, but it's it's a really good color actually you know and I was curious to see if it hardened like the PY 159 um, in Schmincke that we all know we have trouble like getting that to to be looser right <laughs> in any case the other component in these is the black and the black that I like is in these which is PBK11. So they mix PBK11 with different single pigments to come up with these colors. And as a result, we have this really interesting mix of colors that I'd like to swatch for you today and just talk a little bit about the comparative. Um, and I, I'm just curious myself because I have really never painted with this. So what I did is um, I have my drawers that I've been setting up. And if you haven't seen the drawer video, definitely go check it out. I poured myself a full pan of each one, which is part of this whole drawer set collection. Like I literally am going to fill these drawers with one full pan of every color that I'm interested in painting with, or just want to see. And I want to see how it rewets. Now there's, these have set pretty quickly. They are not travel worthy by far. I just I just poured them this morning and it's dry and it's um, like the tops are dry, but you can feel they're still squishy, but they're not like wet, wet, right? Which is kind of exciting. I don't know whether these are going to shrink back because let's just like, let's just give you a little warning that for instance, Daniel Smith, when Daniel Smith <laughs> dries, it's a nightmare, which is one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of Daniel Smith in pans because this is what a full pan will turn into once it's dry. It literally will be a full pan at first with all of the paint you're supposed to get in a full pan. But then by the time it sets, it's literally gone to nothing. And if I were to send this out to, to people, it's really frustrating because you have to then explain that, no, there's actually all the paint in there, but this is what happens to their formula. So I don't know what's wrong with Daniel Smith. I just know that I could fix it, but if I fix it, then you're not getting authentic Daniel Smith. So I could fix the formulas and make sure that they pour really nicely and get to you um, in pans without cracking. But then again, it would be a different version of the paint. Same thing with Mission Gold. A lot of the paint colors do the same thing. You can see here where this one 
it used to be a full pan of paint and obviously it's not it just shrank on like two sides so it shrank this way and it shrank this way and it shrank that way and these were all super super full so you can see now if i tilt it to the side you can see how they're either cracked or shrank and it's just a it's just something that happens with some paint it doesn't make it bad paint it's still beautiful paint and really paintable but when it comes for like sending these out people think that you know if I sent that out even though that's a full pan of paint but what it looks like it looks like it's half used so that can be really frustrating for people who are spending money on these paints and thinking they're getting a really good deal but then in actuality the paints are shrinking up to nothing um one that doesn't do that just in comparison and you know i'm always kind of teaching you is m gram and that's because the formula is very similar i noticed to the paint that I actually make. So um, of course some pigments we can't help but if you notice that these are staying really really full you can see some of them completely full no problems at all and that's what I love about M. Graham. So you definitely get your money's worth out of M. Graham. So the reason why I mention this is because a lot of times you'll get these paints that you think like mission gold that you think you're getting a super super deal on and then they when you pour them and they dry back you're like okay well i got beautiful paints but it doesn't seem like i get the volume out of it that i get out of others so i'm watching these carefully and closely to see how much they do shrink but right now so far and this is only day one they are still maintaining uh, some of the volume i can see where some have already started to fall below the top level which is the majority of them right kind of falling a little bit so we'll see what happens after a couple of weeks of dry time now normally when i pour a full pan i recommend pouring like a little bit and then mixing it around letting it dry for a week and then pouring more that's like the better way to get the paint in the pans and let them dry but for this video i just wanted to pour all the way to the top and see what happened with these Okay, so there's some comparisons, and as I go through and swatch these, um, and I got a couple of regular ones just for me. Now, this is a dot card I made, and I will be sending out some of these in my subscription packages uh, coming up, but they will be to people who are adding to their order because the dot cards are going to be here in the um, studio. So in order to get them into the packages, uh, you'll have to order at least one thing. Now this is kind of odd. This has some kind of a grit in it. Now it is a light oxide red and I do really love oxide. Um, I don't think this isn't something on my brush because this is a very clean brush, but it definitely has some kind of a bizarre thing going on. in the light red oxide but i do love it you know but let's compare it to uh one of my red oxides that i just did just so that i can get a feel i feel like this is a little light um than i would expect it to be let's see uh let me get this one and i'll try this one this is one from my um my new landscape set at jackswatercolor.com this is an oxide but it's more like a kaput mortem oxide yeah i really love i still love mine as far as the formula let's compare them side by side Although this paints really well, it's nice. I just find that it, it dilutes a little bit. It doesn't really like it disappears real quick. You see what I mean? How it goes down to nothing. Let's try another one because I have another um, red oxide in this set that is a little more red. Yeah, this is much more like this one so let's get it 
because they don't re-wet like quickly, but nope, I still I still love the quality of the handmade watercolor. Although it is very good. I like it. But see how the tinting strength is just a bit more in the handmade as compared to this one. Now I'm picking up a bunch of this and it's good at first, but then you lose it right away. So the tinting strength is better and more powerful in the handmade ones and the painting. I like the paintability of the handmade watercolor over of the iron oxide over their light iron oxide. But with that being said, at that price, I think it's pretty good. However, if you notice, it's drying really, really super light, which concerns me. So let's try and just get more going on on this swatch. And this is a tricky color. It is an earth tone. So earth tones can be a little bit finicky. Uh, you just have to kind of work with them and get used to the formula. I don't know why this one is just like separating. So that's the only thing I would uh, wonder about is it's almost as if it's not suspended in its binder as well as I'd like being that I make paint. And if you notice every time I put more on, it still fades back. So I'm having a little trouble keeping the color like really, really nice and um, nice and bright. So let's see. Let's see what happens. We'll wait. And now there's so much water on this, it's starting to bleed. So at this point, I'm kind of never going to get to the dusk ones. <laughs> let's see. All right, let's move on. So we're going to get this out of my brush because iron oxide will be a little more staining on your brush. Let's rewet the Azo yellow light. I thought this was a very, very pretty color. And again, you know, this is considered a student grade paint. Some people argue that because of the light fast qualities that you could consider this professional grade paint. And I'm not saying it's not, but I am saying right now, let me get you guys in a little bit closer that to me, what I am experiencing is more of a student grade kind of experience. So let's get you closer. Okay. So you can see this a bit better. There we go. And let's see if I can get some of the glare to go away a little bit. It's just really wet. Okay, so the Azo Yellow I do really love. It's beautiful. Kind of hard to mess that one up. Then I got a rose color that I thought was really pretty. Don't love it. What's in this rose? So the rose is PR122. So this rose, I don't love this PR122. It, it's beautiful, but it almost reminds me of something that would have that has white in it. I think it would be a little bit of a hard one to paint with. Doesn't it look a little dusty? For it being a single pigment, it looks to me and feels like it has white or some kind of filler in it. Ah, it might be like maybe a talc filler. And maybe that's why they consider this to be more student grade. I don't know. When you get the dot cards, let me know and see if you agree with me. And then the ultra deep. Ultra deep, typically ultramarine is ultramarine. But again, remember in paint, there is usually the pigment, which is uh, the dry pigment. And then there is a binder and binders can be made of several different things. Normally they're very organic binders. Some people do synthetic formula binders. Most handmade watercolors are just, um, a really nice organic binder, like a food binder like gum Arabic is what I use with honey. If there are fillers, sometimes they'll actually beef them up with some talc, like talc, or there's like a lot of other different things that they can beef the watercolors up with. So the ultramarine is really pretty. 
it's beautiful. Uh, I do need to just see a little more. It is granulating, which is nice. So let's just grab another ultramarine to put next to it for a second. So there's that ultra. Let's go into my dogs under my feet right now for some reason. So if I have, I haven't put all of my paints in here yet. Let's get this one. So I'd like to compare it to a French ultra. So this is French ultra PB 29 by Schmincke. And by the way, this brush I'm using is one of the new brushes from the website. I really, really love it. Okay. So yeah, the Schmincke ultramarine is more blue and less violet. The Van Gogh ultra deep, ultra deep is very, very violet. And I love the, I love the Schmincke one so much nicer. Okay. So the basics, nah, not too impressed with them. Not yet. The Quinn purple is not, the tinting strength actually is not as bright as it should be. It should be much, much more bright and lively being a Quinn purple. Let me see what this is. Oh, stop. No, no. I have one of my dogs underneath me. Let's get another swatch card. Well, the tinting strength is beautiful. I do really like the tinting strength of this one. So Quinn Purple Red, I think is a win if you like a more blue kind of pinky purple look. I think that's pretty. Uh, this one is PV55. So I think this one's really nice. And I think this would probably mix with their Deep Ultra or any Deep Ultra really nicely. Oh. What is going on? I'm getting some weird grittiness coming out of the paints. I don't know why, but it does make a really, really pretty purple when mixed with this deep ultra. Oh my God. My dog is under my feet right now. Skylar, stop. Okay. Let's switch waters and cause for some reason it's getting just a little polluted in my water. I need another water. Let's give it this one. It does make a nice mix though, but as you can see, it's already getting really, really washed out where I would prefer to see it maintain its color. Um, when you look at other ones in this price range, there are some that hold their color way better. And I think that's what really rings true. Probably why this particular brand has a decent reputation, but is, has a lot of mixed reviews from people. So from what I'm seeing, I have seen other ones that I've liked a lot better. And I don't love how some of these are drawing back. I really don't like what happened to the light oxide. I mean, look at in comparison, do you see what happened to their oxide? Their light oxide really went to nothing where the two that I have played with like this one, it's really, really nice. And it's more even the wash. This one is just almost completely lost its color. So that is perplexing to me. I don't like that. Okay. Now let's get to the dusk green. I'm really hoping these are amazing right now. It looks good every once in a while, even a watercolor that is maybe disappointing in other areas can do something really, truly great with their granulating colors. So far, I really like the dusk green. Now, when you look through a lot of other watercolor, which I am currently doing in our subscription, you're really hard pressed to find things that are similar to like the white nights where they're mixed with black. 
And so that kind of like having these really beautiful premixes isn't always something that is going to be available to you. And it's not really available in most of the lines. Here, let me do another card. So this is the dusk green. You do have to use a lot of it. So that means to me, the tinting strength is not as exciting as they boast. I do have to keep picking up a lot of watercolor to keep that strength going. Otherwise it will wash out a lot more, but it's still a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Let's see what's in this one. So dust green is made of PBK 11 and PG seven. So that's a really nice mix. So now let's just think about what this actually means as far as watercolor. In comparison to other colors, you probably won't find another PBK 11 mixed with PBK or PG7, right? This is around $7 for a 10 ml tube. Now, when you're looking at other PBK 11 uh, mixes, maybe Rembrandt, Dusk, uh, Pink with PR122 and PBK 11 might be something that could compare to some like the dusk pink here. I don't know that they even have a green though mix. So again, you're kind of stuck. The only one I do know that has, um, these green mixes is like, this is really pretty though. This is really, really pretty. The way that the PBK 11 is reacting. It's, it's really nice. It's very gritty. It's really pretty. Um, I would say, let me look. So a gallo has one that's called forest, but they use PBK seven, um, with PG seven and PY 43, but it's a gorgeous color. <sighs> Daniel Smith has jadeite, but that we're talking about like jadeite, which is a Primatech color. So now we're going into a completely different price range, which is more like $26 for something like that. Right. And this is a little more blue green while jadeite is a little more green, green, um, deep sea, deep sea by PG 18 with PB 29. That's by a gallo. I'm not really seeing too many green greens like this, you know, so you pretty much would have to make it yourself. There's aqua marine, so the aquamarine is PB 29. It's not made with a PG seven aquamarine by white Knights, which I happen to love is completely different color. So it's more blue green than green, green. There's green shadows. Green shadows is a PBK 11 with a PG seven. So it is the same combination, but you can see how much more bold it is. And when it comes to it, these are the same in price range. So I'm telling you, this is why I think my win would be white Knights. Now, if you want to test out white Knights, I do have white Knights available on Jack's watercolor so that you can sample it. And I often send out samples of these in the watercolor subscription. I actually really love this. Okay. So this is a good comparison. So now this one is looking a little more dusty and this is the one by Van Gogh, but I still do love it. I still really think it's so pretty, but as far as tinting strength, the white Knights is the clear win. Don't you think the clear win? Because I can just get so much more paint. And the prices are the same. If anything, white nights might be less expensive because white nights comes in a set of three. So you get like three, 10 ML tubes. And so three in us dollars would be like 1999 or $20 for, um, which breaks down to $6 and 66 cents per tube, as opposed to $7 per tube. So very similar depends on where you get them, but definitely the tinting strength, you can see the difference between what we consider to be professional grade and student grade. See how the student grades much more milky. It dries a lot more powdery, which makes me think that maybe there is a filler in there. And this is just like 
really, really beautiful paint, you know? So really good quality there. I love that. Now I do have uh, Jack's watercolor, which is kind of much different because I do do a lot of greens with the PBK 11 in them. But as far as affordable pricing, you know, you do get what you pay for. <laughs> like they're really high pigmented and they're beautiful watercolors, but they're more for professional grade collectors because, you know, they are pure pigments and they're more rare pigments that I use. Um, even if I do use PBK 11 as a mixer, the pigments that I typically mix into them are very rare. Here's the dusk yellow, which is incorporating that beautiful green or that beautiful yellow. Now the reason why I said green is because this particular yellow does have a green cast to it. And I'm kind of hoping that it shows me some really beautiful, maybe if I pick it up from the actual pan here. No, still not as, not as exciting. Like you really have to get in there, but I can say it granulates beautifully. I really love this paper. This is a new paper. I'm going to send it out in the subscription so you guys can try it. It's 100% cotton. It kind of feels like Arsh, but it is very, very super affordable. And I'm kind of loving it. It's really nice. Okay, so where am I? So for the yellow, this particular yellow is made with a formula of PBK11 and PY128. Now it's semi-opaque watercolor. I think it's a little more transparent than that, but I guess they're saying semi-opaque because of the granulation, if I just keep going over. Now here's the thing, it granulate, I, I'm a collector of paints, so I'm pretty happy with all of them. I think they all have a gorgeous thing. So I totally would send you the dot cards in these and be very happy for you to try them. Cause I still think I don't have anything like this. I haven't made anything like this yet. And it's very, very different. As you can tell this particular yellow, the PY 128, it's known for, it's called Azo condensation yellow, I think. And it is a light fast. It's semi-transparent. It's staining. It's greenish in color, like a greenish tone yellow. Um, and usually it's bright and intense. It's not as vibrant here as I'd like to see, meaning that there's a lot more PBK 11 and probably some kind of filler because otherwise if we mixed a yellow and a PBK 11, we probably would get a little brighter, but wouldn't it be cool to get like the as a yellow involved here and maybe like grab some of the Azo yellow and kind of just kind of feed it into this one and brighten it just a bit more. You see what I mean? Like I could just add some of their Azo yellow. So my advice to you, if you were going to buy this is maybe pick up the Azo yellow that they, the Azo yellow light so that you can mix it in, but clear win on the dusk yellow. I really like that dusk pink. I like the dusk pink. Gosh, I have a lot of pinks like this in my watercolor arsenal. This one is, let's see, PVK 11 and PV 19. Okay. So PV 19, I use a ton of, this is a very, very nice one though. I really do like this dusk pink, not disappointed by this at all. This is a beautiful, almost like a potter's pink, but of course we know that the reason why they're keeping this, keeping it real is because they're not using the more expensive pigments where I might use a potter's pink. But I do really, really love this one. I think it's really beautiful. I think this clear win here on this one, it in a way kind of reminds me a little bit of my, um, my Jack's Violet 
let's get Jack's Violet out. Do I have it here? Let's see. I don't think I put any of my watercolors in here yet. Did I? I don't think I did. I'm looking to see if I have Jack's watercolors. Like, hmm, let's see what this is. I only have a few of mine here, so sorry if I'm not bringing the goods to you. This is one from my Pinkberry set. And this is called Shadowberry. It's what I would think is a little bit similar, except I don't use PBK 11 in this. There's no black in this one. This one is actually going to pull a little bit of blue when it dilutes and starts to granulate in the water. So it plays well. But that would be like kind of similar. But no, but instead of PBK 11, it's going to be um, like a cobalt or a violet kind of can see how the the breakout on this is going to be a little more blue gray in the back which I happen to love <laughs> so that's shadowberry let me see what else if I have anything else in here maybe violet berry let's try violet berry so violet berry again is from the berry set that I just released on my website these are handmade watercolors so they're professional grade this is a very very bright bold berry color that granulates so definitely doesn't have any pbk 10. again to get the pbk 10 i'm pretty sure i'd have to find my crushed berry because the crushed berry is the one that had that like depth to it. You can see what's happening with this. It like starts to granulate and split apart, which is what it's meant to do. So you just add water and you can kind of see all the different colors coming out in it from the reds, the berry reds to the grays. Let's put that there. Same with this. I love these colors. They're so pretty. Um, but I'm really curious. I do not have my, I have pink berry. Nope. I do not have my crushed berry. Let's look. I think I have my drawers underneath me. So here's what I'm talking about. So crushed berry is this one. It has PBK 11 in it, but this is like a little more violet and mine's a little more dark maybe violet mist violet mist could be very very close i do still like this though this is crushed blackberry no crushed blackberry is definitely more deep purple yeah definitely more purple i love having things on hand i like this pink a lot It's very inspiring and it, you can layer it a little bit. The only thing I would say is there are some areas here that are drying and they're drying dusty. So I don't know if we should, shouldn't like maybe make one, but again, let's just go back to that price, right? At the price, this is a great price. So, so far I love the dust green. I like the dust yellow and I like the dust pink. I really do. I like the, I like all three. Oh, I forgot to hang on. Got to put them on the card. They granulate nicely. I think I haven't gone through their whole line, but right now off the top of my head, I'm most impressed with their dusk colors. You know, there's also a Japanese watercolor 
like I think Hirataki makes some dusk colors that I'd like to try. They don't come in. Um, they don't come in tubes, so we can't do dot cards with them. But it would be kind of fun to try them. Here's the dusk violet. Okay, let's check out the dust violet. So let's rewet. Rewet's decent, but it doesn't have a high tinting strength. Like that's that's all I'm really getting from a dot. Kind of a low tint not as vibrant as I'd like. So that means that I have to use a lot of the color to get this dark. So where you're saving in money, you're going to go through a lot more watercolor. And that makes me think that there's got to be a filler. Don't you agree? Because otherwise you would get a lot of color. Out of curiosity, I just have to get out the Blackberry because I want to see if what I'm thinking is right here. Let's see. Okay. Let's get out one of my colors. We're going to take out the crushed blackberry, which is PV19 with PVK11. So essentially this is the same formula. But I do love it. I do love it. You know how I love those violets. I like those violets. All right. Let's see what happens here. So opened a new one. Let's get another card. Rewits well. Yeah, I still like mine. <laughs> I still like mine. It just paints so good, but they have done a very good job on this. So let me not put you off. This is remember, um, my handmade watercolors are more expensive. They are not in student range at all. These are for professional watercolor artists. They are going to do things and for your artwork that you're not going to get in other ones. And they don't go dusty because they're just pure pigment. There's no fillers, no additives, nothing. So it's not even comparing one to the other. But this is the same formula. The difference would be this binder is a better quality binder. So... We're going to, we're going to wait and let these dry. Just give it like I'm trying to create some of these little color areas. We're going to see how they go. All right. Now you remember how dark that was before my very eyes. I'm watching this dry back and it literally, let's put this up here. I'm going to mark it. So this one is the Van Gogh and it's dust, dusk violet. And this is Jack's watercolor. I'm so glad I did this because you know, sometimes I'm moving so fast, I don't even realize. So this is crushed blackberry. Oops. Okay, look at this. Man, we got to go back and watch the video because this just went so dusty all of a sudden. Did it not just completely lose its tinting strength? I'm actually really disappointed because it looked like it was going to be a really, really big win. But to me, it completely went to nothing. I'm going to see. I don't believe mine will do that. 
because I haven't ever had anything fade that fast. It really faded. So if anybody's watching this that is an aficionado on Van Gogh and these watercolors, would you please let me know if you know anything about if they have fillers? I know I have some of my collectors out there who collect my watercolor and you know so much and have told me so much about um, pigments and binders and fillers and how to tell and you know all those things and I would love to know the explanation behind this because that just faded before my very eyes and I was so excited about the color. Now as far as like a dusty purple I think that that would still be a nice thing to paint with but if it's this or white knights I would go with the white knights. Let's get out um, a white knight version here I'll just get a big one. Oh I'm out of paper. Wait I have some more over here. I didn't expect to use so many of these but I have tons of it. I'm on. Okay let's look through the white knights or something and hmm yeah now I just realized other than violet shadows so violet shadows which is PV 23 with PVK 11 but the only thing I have that is even close to you know using the PV is my own I don't think anything else Imperial Purple has PV19 with PV29, but not the black. PV19, PV29 is Rose of Ultramarine. Yeah, there's like, I don't see anything that that uses. And this is the thing, right? Like there's a whole gap. Maybe by Roman Schmall there might be a PBK11. But the only ones that I know that often uses PBK11 is like White Knights, right? blue shadows dark blue shadows um, you could probably take some PV19 and mix it into one of the other ones or just mix your own PV19 with PVK11 and see what you get and depending on um, the, the quality of your PV19 it will either be too dusty and like looking like it's got fillers in it or it will be really super vibrant like mine so you can see this is such a good example. This is the difference between a hundred percent pigment and this is like one part pigment to one part binder, right? There's not like one part pigment and one part filler to one part binder. You know, this is one part pigment to one part binder. This I'm not really sure because this is the same formula but different brand. So they have somehow really messed up the exact same pigment um, pigment combination. This is how it should be with PBK11 and PV19, and this is somehow got itself really diluted and messed up. So what would happen is obviously you might get lucky and like the whiter white kind of look the white talcum powder kind of look but to me that would be disappointing and a little frustrating because if I painted this color in and I needed it there and then it went to nothing I really couldn't depend on the color and that's what would slide it more into the student grade but even being a student I would want more out of my watercolor which is why I typically recommend like mission gold or white nights to students or people just getting started and uh, those are pure pigment sets you know probably not a ton of binder but they do have I mean not a ton of binder I'm sorry not a ton of filler but they probably have something I'm not sure I don't think that I've heard of anything but maybe they have something I don't know this clearly does though right I'm, I'm so disappointed in it all right let's look a little more wow that part just kind of blew my mind right there I did not expect that to happen I looked up and literally it faded so let's go back and look at this one this was 
the um, dusk pink. And although this one has cobalt in it, I still, I still really love the fact that it is maintaining vibrancy. I think it's a really pretty pink. I would like to see it be more vibrant, but at the same time, I think it's fine because it didn't do what this one did. It didn't like, there's a few areas that went like very, very light white, but it's not getting as dusty as this one went really dusty. But again, like, I mean, you could manage it, but if you had the choice and you could paint with this one, I think you would definitely want to paint with that one. I do really love the yellow because I don't really see anything else like that out there. And I think that's really fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I still really like the green. I like the green too. Some of the dustiness you can clearly see in the green though. So if it was, you would probably want to get some white night sets because I think the white nights are really cool, like green shadows and stuff like that. I think that's good. Um, there is a green shadows by Mission Gold that is really beautiful as well. So that might be a nice option. I, I probably have it here somewhere, but I don't know. I don't want to waste your time and hold you up by looking through these because I haven't sorted them yet. And I still need to do swatch cards on them. So I'm probably not going to be able to recognize the color until I do that. Unless I have it up here. Nope, I don't. Yeah, still getting myself all organized. But this was interesting. Okay, so overall, what would I choose? Um, very disappointed in their regular range. They're okay, but I think they would be more frustrating to paint with than exciting to paint with. And I think there are a lot of other watercolors out there in the regular ranges that you could get. I would look at, maybe we'll do some swatching videos on Paul Rubens because I just recently uh, offered a set of Paul Rubens and a set of 18 Mission Gold that I really like at like under just uh, around $50 or less. So those are really affordable for 18 colors and they come in a tin and you can paint with them and, and just enjoy them. I would say no on the dusk violet, yes on the dusk pink, yes on the dusk yellow, yes on the dusk green. I don't know if they have any other colors. You would have to layer these. I think I wouldn't bother with the regular ones. I would definitely at the price range go with either Mission Gold or just get yourself a nice set of white knights because the white knights are not expensive at all. You can get a tube set with some really great colors. Uh, look for Carmine is a beautiful color by White Knights. Uh, that is this one. Let's flip this over. So Carmine by White Knights. I do have to warn you though, White Knights will dry back as you can see. <laughs> but this is a stunning color. So if you wanted a PV19 that has a very high tinting strength, let's ruin my swatch. Oops. There we go. Then Carmine by White Knights is one of my favorites. PV19, as far as affordability, it's really beautiful. It's making me think right now I should definitely offer quarter pan sets in the white nights because look at how pretty that is right and then you could take the white nights black and get your own beautiful like blacky pink but look at how nice and bright it is. And then the more black that you mix into it, the more like violet you'll get. See that nice violet happening there? See how pretty that is? I love the carmine, it's so pretty. Um, you'll definitely have lovely yellows in the white nights. Hopefully my brush, there we go. Isn't that nice? 
gas to the lemon yellow. It won't, I mean, they're basic, right? The white nights are very basic colors, but they have a beautiful range of colors. And I think you'll really enjoy painting with them. They're so, so pretty, you know, and I believe you could probably just get a basic white night tube set very inexpensively. I know I have a ton of them here. I've, I've had them many, many times in the studio because I do dot cards in those in the watercolor subscription continually. You'll get a lot of white nights um, to test out in the subscription. All right. So what did you think? Let me know if you think that you'd like to have this uh, sent to you in a dot card version so that you could try them out. I'm really curious if you think that, um, you know, this is something worth doing into our monthly watercolor subscription, maybe not as a featured paint, because I think you'd much rather get a feature, like a larger version of this in the featured paint. But this one, this one, not so bad, right? This is even rather pretty in a way. It's just a little bit frustrating to paint with, I think, because you couldn't really mimic this. It's just going to be like rather random. Um, and I think ultimately it's good to be able to remove color and get this option, but not have the color actually dry back where you have just no color left. You know what I mean? You want it to be more intentional. Um, I don't like their ultra deep. I think it is just horrible. I love like Schmincke's ultramarine is a beautiful, beautiful color. Even my ultramarine is really good. I use it a lot. It's really nice because it's smooth. And my Mary Blue has a gorgeous ultramarine as well. All right, enough. I could talk about watercolor for 24 hours a day. And this has gone way longer than I expected it to. I hope you guys are having a great day and enjoying your painting and just having fun out there with watercolor. At the end of the day, look, any of these watercolors would be like happy painting experiences. There are details and the finer things that we go through here on the channel that, um, really at the end of it, it's just being picky, you know, because all of these are stunning. They're all gorgeous watercolors. I don't think that anything here is a disappointment or something that isn't an advantage. Uh, still at the end of the day, you can get some pretty good stuff out of this. And I think that, um, would I spend money on them? No, I wouldn't spend money on these. I am only too happy to send you guys what I have in the dot cards so that you can try it for yourself. I do like the, um, when I say I wouldn't spend money on them, I wouldn't spend money on their basics. I would buy, if I couldn't get anything else and I didn't want to do these myself, I would buy their Dusk series would I buy it often? I don't think so. Probably not because I kind of am really happy just mixing my own versions of this. And of course I have my own paints to paint with. So, you know, at this point in my watercolor game, um, I have to paint with professional paints, but I do like these combinations. I probably will come up with something very similar in my own binder so that I can be rest assured that they're going to give me exactly what I want. I do really love what they have and I don't think I've seen anything else in comparison, but you can let me know out there in watercolor world because I would be really excited to actually compare and contrast maybe these four colors by another company if you can find the exact same ones. Okay. And that's my Van Gogh experience. That was interesting. I'm going to have to like process it for a little while because I'm kind of just still a little bit perplexed as to what happened there. Not that it doesn't look pretty, right? Okay. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Thanks for tuning in.